Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson with DailyTexture.com. I wanted to do a hopefully quick video. It'll probably be longer, but I'm going to attempt to make it quick. About the uh, first of one, I mean the first one of the new winter collections. I'm getting ready to release the first winter collection this weekend. So I thought I'd give you a short introduction and actually take you through an example image from start to finish. Um, just to give you an idea of what's in these collection, in this collection, I'm going to take you through a little slideshow here, if it'll work. And these are some of the textures that are in the collection. They all have a winter tone, winter cooler colors little bit of warm in there in a couple of them because I love warm colors I'm not I don't work with cool colors as much but I do like to do winter artwork and I wanted to create these textures for that but also to give you some softer textures they don't have to just be used with winter scenes or winter subjects and I'm going to show you an example picture in just a minute that'll describe what I'm talking about. Um, so we have some that are more smoother, some that have a little bit more action going on like this one, has quite a bit more brush work, a little darker tones. Um, you know, people think winter is just white, gray. It's not. There's really a lot of colors there if you look. Um, you can see them. So this is just, uh, the collection is 20 textures, and then I've created these um, complementary color canvases, like this one, and I'll zoom this in so you can see the detail on that canvas there. And the canvases are all alike, there's eight of them in different color tones though, that go along with <coughs> the other textures, similar color tones. Pretty much anything you create with the, any of the textures, you can use one of these canvases with this too, and I'll show you an example. Now this is one of the snow textures. I've made four, and um, this is the one I call Jumbo, only because it's got a ton of light snow. And then this is the large one, which is a little bit larger flakes. Um, they're closer, closer up to use with your closer subjects. Then here is a medium one with a little bit less snow. And here is a small one with just a few flakes. And you can use them singly or you can use them on top of each other. And I will show you how to do that as well. Now, let me start here. This is an example image that I created using one of the textures and the snow as overlays. And this was the finished image with the texture, but then I took it um, and blended that with one of the complementary canvases, and I basically just masked out the edging all the way around until I got a nice soft edging so it blended in with the canvas, and, and I actually did an overlay of the canvas on top of this one as well to enable the, now this is small resolution, so it's looking real pixelated, but it enables these subjects to also pick up the texture of the canvas. Um, this next one, well, I missed one. Okay. Now, this one here is what I'm talking about. They don't have to be used just for winter subjects because the textures, <clears throat> several of them are softer and more pastel in nature. They can go with your subjects that require a little bit of a softer touch and not quite as bold colors like this Lhasa Apso I photographed at a dog show. Now this dog was sitting on a groomer's table, had a lady behind the dog, had a lot of busyness going on behind the dog and a lot of junk on the table next to the dog and the dog heard the click of the camera and turned and looked over his shoulder, his or her shoulder um, to me and that's when I got this picture. I placed the dog on top of this winter texture and because the colors of this texture went well with the colors of the dog. So I placed the dog on top, masked away the dog's busy background and blended the edges of the fur 
with the texture. The dog, um, the fur was a little bit, it was a little bit noisy. The, these photos of the dog show were taken indoors in absolutely horrible lighting conditions. I swear at these shows, they, they make it as hard on photographers as they possibly can. And this year was the absolute worst. Um, so the photos were extremely noisy. And what I like to do when a photo is too noisy is I'll either take the photo into Painter and I'll actually paint the subject or I will take it into Topaz Impressions which is the uh, new software by Topaz that it does auto painting for you. I will take it in there and run some of those presets on different layers of the subject to give it a painterly look which basically takes away the noise really quickly and this is a combination of several different presets that I ran and I masked away the parts I didn't want for instance um, the eyes on the dog and the nose have a smoother preset as well as this hair on the outside edge but then there wasn't enough detail after I ran the smooth preset in this hair here so I ran another preset on a duplicate of the original image which gave more detail to the hair and I put that on top and just left the detail of the hair and masked away everything else that I wanted to be kept smooth and then I merged them together so this is just another uh, or one of one of many examples coming of what you can do with these textures that aren't necessarily winter related they can be useful for a lot of other subjects as well and here's another winter one Let's, this is the first one with that heavy strong texture and I put the bald eagle flying through it, masked away all the background, and then put him on top, and then I put the snow layer on top of the eagle. And then I also took that same image and blended it with one of the canvas backgrounds I'm providing with this group of textures, one of these complementary canvases, and just masked away the edging of the original picture with it on top of the canvas so it blended real nicely with the canvas and it just gives a, a different look to it, a softer look. It just depends on your application. It, it creates sort of a vignette of the canvas and vignettes work well with say prints and some products but then other products of a vignette won't work too well or a canvas texture won't work too well. So I, by doing the images two different ways this can be used on just about any product and with this canvas and vignette thing going on here this can be used on some products but won't do well on other products but it just gives me another way of presenting it plus if you notice it changed the color tones when I did um, blend it in with this texture and I also did place the texture on top to give the eagle some of the canvas texture but that's just an example of what kind of things uh, are in this collection so there's 20 textures there's eight canvas backgrounds and there's four snow overlays in the collection now let's um, do an example uh, I'm going to attempt to take you through a composite example which is a little bit harder but I I just I have an idea and I want to fly with it here so I'm going to remove this logo put this down here at the bottom so this is the texture I've chosen to use as the background from the winter collection and what I'm going to do is put I've got a bird's nest and I have a bird and these are going to be put together within this image um, I think what I'm going to do first is mask away the background from this bird who is also really noisy so we're gonna take care of that right away and run <clears throat> what's called topaz denoise on the bird and that just kinda smooths everything out when I do that it gives him a more painterly look I like to do painterly looks on a lot of these photos I use with the textures you don't have to and some of them I don't um, some of them I can just run a denoise on it and it'll smooth it out 
enough where it'll blend well with the texture but if the photo is too photographic looking when blended with the texture and they're just there's a distinct difference or a lot of noise still in there I will often do either take it into Corel Painter and paint the subject just the subject or I will use that Topaz Impressions the auto painting program to paint just the subject leaving the texture alone now we've got my bird um, denoised so here comes the fun part let me get situated here now I'm in Topaz Photo FX Lab which is the host program for many of these Topaz modules over here it enables me to quickly get to these um, modules by staying on the I can stay in this main program but access anything else in here so I don't have to keep going back and forth to Paint Shop Pro which is my regular host program um, I do my masking right here on this masking tab brush value all the way to the left will remove the background push it all the way to the right it will put it back here's your brush size hardness I always keep all the way down because I like a soft edge when masking flow is like opacity all the way over here gives you very strong removal all the way if you move it back this way it it takes away less edge aware you can up this so when you go around the edge of a subject it should stay right along the edges I don't usually do that I I like to just basically brush away some of the edges so it blends better with the background so what I'm going to do right now is I've got a very large brush size so I can take away some of this very quickly like this and I'll get pretty close to him obviously I won't need the flowers for this picture I just chose this one because he, he was cute so I got away I got pretty close there and now I'm gonna get make a smaller brush and get in closer and I, I won't need his feet either because he's going to be sitting in the nest by the time I get done so we're just going to take out those feet and make a smaller brush and go right along the edge as close as I can get without going over the edge at this point when I get in there in those smaller areas I'll, I'll use a softer brush so now we have a feetless bird I do like to stay nice and sharp around the beak. We can blow this up so I can see it a little better. We're going to reduce the brush size down to about two to get in tight here around this beak because I do want that to be a fairly sharp edge. And then we'll go close around his feathers a little bit more, just making sure to get as much of the background removed as possible okay now I'm going to reduce the flow which is like opacity make it a little bit bigger brush size and I'm actually gonna brush away some of the edges of his feathers this helps him blend better with the background and if I brush away too much I can always um, bring it back later I just like it to be very soft around the edges and have it blend nicely I still have a little white line there so I'm gonna go a little bit stronger with the flow and try to and sometimes you know get rid of that sometimes I just tap now I'm gonna do a low opacity again or flow I'm just going to tap around the outside edge which erases some of him now he's looking pretty good that's a pretty good mask now let's try to do something with the nest well he's almost sitting in the nest this is great um, I'm going to try something with this nest layer I am going to try well first of all let's try darken it gets away uh, takes too much of it overlay soft light overlay leaves quite a bit of the nest mm. it's 
going to be really hard for me to get in those little white areas. I'm going to try to up the exposure on the nest a little bit and try the darken. Now darken's going to get rid of too much of my detail. Overlay looks pretty good. Raise the exposure up a little bit. Now I'm going to mask away some of this nest layer. See, because we have a distinct difference right here. I want to I want to fix that. Get rid of that. Even if I get rid of some of these little fuzzies. That's okay. I'm probably going to lower the flow in the brush size and just gently brush away some of this right here to make it blend a little better. I want it real soft on the bottom. And back here I want to make it look, bring a little bit more of it away. And I can tell you already that for the, for what I'm doing here, the bird layer is too bright. Compared to the nest. So we're going to have to do something about that. I'm getting away. See, a lot of times I'll take away and then I'll put back gently. Let's put some of this back because I didn't need to take all of that away. So now I'm, I've reversed my brush value to bring back some of it faded in the background. And I'm just tapping right now because I don't want to do it too strong. I want to bring back enough where you can see that there's a nest there. going to go back to the bird layer because I really have too much of him masked away right there so I'm going to put some back. I'm going to lower the brush size and raise this and I'm going to come back in and see how much I need to put back. See I'm mostly on his belly. That's where I had too much masked away. He's still too bright. Get rid of this line. I don't want that white line showing around it. Let's figure out how I'm going to tone down this bird. Let's try this. See what happens. Let's duplicate the texture layer and put it on top. And try to play with some of these layer modes. Uh, I'm not liking the I have it set very strong. It's very extreme. <coughs> so now soft light will tone it down, tone the bird down some, but it's toning the background down some too. How about that looks that looks pretty good. It's making the background a little bit darker than I want it, but it is darkening the bird. So we're going to leave this on top. 
raise the brush size up. And we're going to uh, mask away some of this where it's too dark around the bird, trying to leave it on the bird. And of course down here is too dark. Now, okay, you see how that's, that's the bird before and this is after, after I've played with darkening him. I'm going to bring this mask in a little bit tighter, this layer, and mask away some of this. Because I just want the bird to be a little darker and I thought I'd try to use the texture to incorporate some of its tones within the bird which is doing pretty good, except for it's darkening the nest, which I don't want. So I'm going to try to get it all off of there. And you can see over here where your white is left. Looks like I've got some down here and over here and somewhere right in here. Now, okay, now the texture layer is just on the bird. So let's darken that up all the way. liking that about 70%. I see a spot when I turn the layers on and off. I can see spots where I missed. There. Now tone wise we're looking pretty good. <clears throat> I'm not sure I like this right here. I either need to um, mask away some more along the bottom of this nest just to give it a little softer transition but not too much you want, you want it to be grounded it just doesn't need to be quite so harsh now I'm just tapping to bring some of that back I like this little piece right here it's like it's almost supporting the little nest my husband found this little nest in the yard and I asked uh, my neighbor who's a bird expert and he said it was most likely a finch or small, you know, s some bird that size. This is a pine siskin, which is a type of finch. Um, the bird actually looks almost a little too big inside the nest. I may have to reduce that. Well, there's my bird outline, and that's coming from this layer. Nope, it's not. That's coming from the nest layer. He looks a little big in there. Let's see if I can get some more of his belly out without getting too extreme. Because right here, there's a little piece of nest that I think needs to be showing that little piece right there now here's something to think about when a bird is sitting in a nest like this or um, sitting down low on something other than a branch this area here is going to be darker especially when they're in a nest because the nest is going to shadow this. So the, um, I'm going to take open on the bird layer and go to Topaz Lens Effects. Uh, they have a gra what's called a graduated neutral density filter. <coughs> you can put do bottom half one, half two stops, quarter one and quad quarter two stops. You can click these bottom ones now see bottom half two stops that's before that's after look at the belly area let's see if I can blow this up okay that's before that's after that adjustment will put enough darkness on this belly area it may put too much but we'll we'll click OK and see what it does 
there. It darkened his belly area while still leaving light up here. I may want to darken this down just a little bit more. I think I'm going to go 100% with that layer, and then I'm going to mask away some of it off his face. I have a little bit more control that way. And I'm just tapping. I just want some light on the face. And the, these little top feathers right here. Like lights coming in and putting a little spotlight on him. Maybe a little light on that little piece of yellow feather right there in his back. Now this nest has a little, this, the light doesn't make sense. We've got light coming here onto the bird and we've got light coming here onto the nest. So I'm going to go to the nest layer and I'm going to try the lens effects, that bottom half adjustment on the nest as well. You see this is before, this is after, how darken that. We're going to try it. It may work, it may not. it darkened it some. Makes a little bit more sense. All of this is just an experiment. I'm going to try something with this layer. I'm going to try to expand it. See this, this little spot right here is bothering me right now. I'd like it to be down more along the edge. that so I just enlarged that texture layer to stretch that part down to the edge because I want this to be more white right here all right that's looking pretty good for a quick edit trying to decide what I'm going to do next. Let's take some snow and put it on top. Turn it on and let's flip the snow. Let's see how that looks or rotate it. If I can get this rotate to work, this is rotator on here is very touchy. There. Now to make your snow show up, you're going to take your blending mode and change it to screen. And that helps your snow to show up. Now that's good. The flakes are a little big. Um, and they're a little bright. You can tone that down a little by taking down the opacity. I think I want a bit more snow in his background though. So. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the bottom layer and I'm going to bring in the uh, Jumbo Snow, which has a lot of snowflakes, but they're a lot smaller. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rotate that like that. Now he looks like he's in outer space. Change that to screen mode. There we go. Now this snow is under the bird and the nest area, so none of that snow is appearing on the bird and the nest is just appearing in the background. So let's turn the top layer of snow I put on earlier back on where the big flakes are. Now we're going to go on to that layer. Here's something to think about when snow is falling on your subject. And it's great to pop a snow layer on here like this and just hit screen and boom you have snow. That's wonderful. But you have to, if you want your picture to be realistic, you have to think about how the snow is falling and where it's going to be hitting. With the snow falling on this bird, let's back up one. Okay, now, don't, this program's wanting to argue with me. Try again. I'm trying to blow this up a little better. When the snow falls, it's going to land on top edge of the bird and the top edge of the nest. Some of it may fall in front, but like pieces that are appearing up under his belly or under his wings from this adjustment, 
they don't make sense because snow doesn't fall down and then get up under here. It falls on top and lands on something that is on the top. So we're going to mask off some of this layer of snow off of him. Any place I think flakes are too big, I will mask them away. Now he's going to have snow on top. That one, that one piece on his beak is really bothering me. I like to show his beak. But then you get down in here, you're not going to have these snowflakes hitting him right there. You're going to have, uh, you might have one land on the edge of the nest, but all these little ones right in here on his chest, you're not going to have those. They're going to land right here on the top of his shoulders, wings, and head. And then these ones under here are just not going to be there. So you want to take off some of those. Okay, now let's look at the nest. They would fall right there. That makes sense. They would fall over here. Some of these right here on the bottom of the nest may, unless they're falling, just happen to be falling in front of it. There are not going to be that many there showing right at first. Now, if he's in a blizzard and it's blowing, swirling all around, yeah, then maybe, but I don't want to blizzard away my bird. I just want to give him a little taste of snow. This one here on his head is bothering me. And you can reduce your opacity of your masking and just take away very lightly some of it. Just lighten those snowflakes so they don't look as harsh to make it a little bit more realistic. This one here is bugging me. Anything that looks like it's coming straight up out of his head, that doesn't make sense. I always, when I'm doing a composite, I always try to think about what makes sense, and I always end up missing something. But at least I'm getting better about it and paying a little bit more attention. All right, let's zoom out. Still looks like it's a little busy right in here. I'm going to take some more of that off. Just tapping. I'm still a low opacity, so I'm not taking it completely off. I'm just taking the harshness of it away. And if you want to put one back on, like I took that one away from his eye there. And let's say I want to put it back. I'll just go to this side. And see there was one right there. There's one right here by his eye. Let's say I did want to leave those right there on that part of his face and head. <clears throat> I could, I really don't like this one right here. And I'll spend sometimes an hour taking away and you know a bunch of individual snowflakes when I'm working with snow. He's got three flakes right here. I think one's enough. And this one right here looks a little bit much. And take that one down. Maybe put a couple back on his chest. Let's see if I can find some. Just a few. This one right here I don't like, so I'm going to take that one back off. But I put a couple right there and let a couple show. And this one by the corner of his eye I don't like. And take away a little more of that. Now, let's see what we've got. Now that's looking pretty cute. I could even lower the opacity of the entire layer, which takes it so it's not that's totally strong. That's a little bit too strong. I'm going to take it down to about... Usually, 50%. Uh, usually, when something's a little bit strong, I'll take it from 100% down to 30. And if that's not strong enough, I'll go up to around 50. And somewhere in between 30 and 50% on these adjustments is something I tend to like. 
Now we're going to try to merge the whole stack together and make sure I haven't missed anything. Sometimes this program will put an odd line like right here, right here, if your masking is off somehow. and Then you got to figure out what layer it's on and get rid of that line. But it usually undoes it when you enlarge something like I did the bird. I enlarged the bird a little bit for this picture. It doesn't do it when you reduce something, just when you enlarge. And it takes it a minute to merge all of these layers together. my fingers there's no odd line I don't see any odd lines perfect and you can turn this off and on to see if you're seeing anything unusual that needs to come off of there that looks really good and I usually uh, will zoom out a little bit more to decide what I think of it overall from a distance as if I was seeing it across the room. Is anything standing out? The only thing standing out to me right now is this dark area right here. It, it's still bothering me. So I can go back to that main layer which is down here and I could stretch that out a little more or I possibly could try a fog adjustment right here on the bottom only to see how that looks. So that's also in lens effects. Lens effects is one of my favorite things in Topaz because they have all these different things you can play with that I really like. Okay, there's a fog on top. We would want a ground fog and I'll try different ones here to see if any of them suit me. Now that one's pretty good. Of course I don't like it on the top. You can put your mouse or your pen on the image to see what it looked like before and after the fog or whatever adjustment you're doing. So that's one thing I could try as a fog adjustment. Another thing I could try as a reflector. Um, they have gold and silver reflectors and I use these all the time to throw light onto my subject. Let's try silver on the bottom. And that lightened it a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to duplicate the finished one. Um, I'm going to turn the first one off and go, I mean the second one off, go back to the first one. I'm going to try both adjustments and this is where duplicate comes in handy. I use it all the time. I'm going to do silver on the bottom for one adjustment and hit OK. So there's my adjustment with the silver. Now I'm going to put this one back on and I'm going to go back to lens effects and on this one I'm going to do that bottom fog and I'm going to compare the two. Fog and it was ground fog right there. Okay, and we're going to zoom out. Okay, there's the one with the ground fog and there's the one with the silver and there's with nothing. I think the ground fog may work a little bit better. Nothing. Silver on the bottom. Silver reflector. Ground fog. I'm going to try to work with the ground fog. But it's got too much fog over the bird in the nest so guess what's going to happen there? It's coming off. Using the masking tool once again um, I'm just going to go over all the way down to the nest and a little bit on the ground there. Now the fog is just on the bottom. Now we're going to lower the opacity just to make a better transition right here and go over that just a little. Now, that's with my mask. That's that one. So 
So that's that's the silver, and that's the fog with the mask on it. So once again, zoom out. Okay, that's with nothing. That's with the silver. That's with the fog. I like the one with the fog better. I just don't like that dark spot on the bottom. I should have zoomed out earlier on so I could have determined that, but I really like this. This would make a beautiful Christmas card. And I might just do that now that I've done this. But this, uh, this white area, this area right down here, this white area is a perfect spot to put a Christmas message. Now I need to decide if there's anything else I want to do to this. Right now I'm thinking it looks pretty good, so I'm not going to do anything else to it. I'm going to call this one done. And let me check everything. I always go back over and look, make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, I really like that with the fog layer on the bottom, getting rid of that dark spot. If I'd have stretched the texture out in the beginning a little bit more, I would have gotten past that. <clears throat> if I had a subject that I was going to put in that spot, I probably would have left it so I could ground it. When you have a darker bottom, it'll ground it. But that, that looks really sweet. Anyway, this is just one example of how you can use both the winter texture and the snow in the varying layers to get an entirely new image in this case from two photographs instead of just one and um, if you have any questions you can always contact me on Facebook or on the website dailytexture.com I hope you guys will enjoy this winter collection with 20 textures 8 canvas backgrounds and 4 snow overlays which you once again will put on top and put in screen mode to make the snow show up and the black disappear and then you can alter the opacity and mask away certain flakes like I showed you. Um, there will be a couple more winter collections. Uh, I have a lot I'm working on with this because of the fact that they're not just for winter as I showed you with the Lhasa Apso photo in the in the uh, slideshow earlier. They're not just for winter. They're actually they have a wide variety of uses, but they're also, because of the nature of the pastel, the softer looks, um, the cool tones, they do work well for winter photos. So, I'm preparing several for the winter collections. This is collection one. Collection one includes the snow. Um, the other collections will not have the snow. They will just have textures and possibly some corresponding uh, canvases, painted canvases, like this one did. But I'm not going to put the snow in each one. I'm only putting the snow in this collection. Um, because you really don't, if you buy this one in number collection two and collection three, you really don't need the snow two more times. Um, most people who like these kind of textures will buy all of the collections. I'm going for three collections in total. I'm not exactly sure how many are going to end up in Collection 2 and Collection 3. There will probably be more textures, maybe five, four or five more in each of those than is in this one. Um, if all goes well, and if I don't burn out on it. So keep your fingers crossed. Anyway, thanks for watching, and once again, to get your collection, go to dailytexture.com. Thank you. Have a great day.